In part five of the Psychoacoustic series, we talked about the headphone pitch shift effect. Now, I just made this name up because I couldn't find any information about it. I'm not a psychoacoustic researcher, but I'm a little confused as to how it might be happening. In this video, I'd like to explore some of the theories and see if we can figure out what's going on. In summary, when you're listening to music on headphones and you take the headphones off, and especially when you hold them in front of yourself like this, there can be an effect where the pitch seems to drop. Now, I know I'm not alone on this because I asked about it in that video, and a lot of folks wrote in to say that they can experience the same thing. Now, I experienced this effect using my headphones, which are open-backed headphones. I don't know if the effect also works on closed-back headphones. Commentators Zion James and Perry Urban wrote in with differing experiences about this. They actually used the same make and model of headphones. One of them experienced it and the other didn't. So first, if you're wearing headphones, give it a shot yourself. I'm going to play this 440 hertz triangle wave, and while it's playing, after five or so seconds, take the headphones and just hold them in front of yourself. See if you can detect a drop in pitch. For me, the drop in pitch is not very subtle. It can be an eighth or maybe a quarter tone. I hear it listening to complex music sources when mixing. I hear it listening to this pure tone. This seems to be the best way to trigger it. Okay, let's explore some of the theories. A lot of you wrote in with comments about what might be going on, and I'd like to try some of those ideas out. For the rest of these demonstrations, keep your headphones on. I'm going to play a tone, and then I'm going to simulate the taking off of headphones and see if I can recreate the effect without actually having to remove your headphones. For example, one of the theories is that the decrease in volume when the headphones come off of your head explains the drop in perceived pitch. Duncan Gray was one of the commentators that wrote in with this suggestion. So let's try it. I'm going to assume about 300 milliseconds is the amount of time it takes to take headphones off and hold them in front of your head. So I'm going to play this triangle tone again, and then over about 300 milliseconds, I'll decrease the volume. See if you can detect any lowering in pitch. I don't know about you, I didn't really hear any change in pitch. Certainly not anything as significant as the headphone pitch shift effect. Okay, one of the other things that changes when you take headphones off is that the apparent timbre of the tone changes. So let's try filtering out some of the high frequencies over 300 milliseconds and see if there's any detected change in the pitch perception. Again, I don't really hear anything with that. Let's try both at the same time. We're going to lower the volume and roll off the high frequencies. Still not working for me. I think we need to get a little bit more serious. Now, a lot of folks wrote in about the Doppler effect. This makes some sense. The headphones are moving away from your head when you take them off, so maybe the Doppler effect causes a shift in the frequency, right? I wanted to make sure I was giving a fair shake to this theory, so I measured the actual speed with which I can take off my headphones. In this video clip, I'm separating the two headphone sides as quickly as I possibly can. You can see in the video that it comes to 5.617 inches per second, but that's ignoring the fact that this was slow motion video. When we apply a correction for that, the true velocity of the headphones was 89.962 inches per second. That comes to about 7.5 feet per second, or 2.3 meters per second. Plugging those values into the Doppler equation, for our 440 hertz test tone, that comes to about 437 hertz as the shifted apparent frequency due to the Doppler effect. Now, this is a significant change in frequency, although it's not dramatic, but there's a deeper problem here. Any explanation we have for the change in frequency perception has to explain the sustained change. With a Doppler effect, when I take the headphones off, there's going to be a dip in pitch. But when the headphones then stop in front of my face, there's no longer any relative motion between my head and the headphones, and so the Doppler effect is no longer relevant. So the Doppler effect might cause a little warble in pitch as the headphones come off, but it's not going to explain the continued perception of lower pitch. Now, as soon as I say that, I remember part four of the series where we talked about the Franson effect. The Franson effect has to do with stereo localization. If you hear a pure tone start on the right side, and then it subtly shifts over to the left side shortly thereafter, you will sometimes continue to hear that sustained tone as still coming from the right side. In other words, the attack or the immediate onset of the sound has a lot to do with where we perceive it to be in the stereo space. Maybe there's a similar effect going on with the Doppler here, where the little warble in pitch triggers us to think that the pitch is lower, and even though it sustains at a higher pitch, we still hear it as lower. Commentator Dave Nagy had a similar interesting theory that maybe the Doppler warble or just the moving of the headphones away triggers some kind of instinctual sense that the pitch should be lower. I don't know. 
But at any rate, let's simulate the Doppler shift as the headphones come off in our little experiment. Now we're going to lower the volume, we're going to filter out the high frequencies, and we're going to warble the pitch in the way that the Doppler effect would, and we'll see if that causes any perceived change in pitch. Unfortunately, I still can't really hear a change. I can hear the warble of the pitch as the headphones come off, but then it just goes back to normal. So we're kind of running out of ideas, but here's one more thing. When you take the headphones off, the headphone on the right no longer only broadcasts sound to the right ear. Now the left ear can hear a little bit of that sound as it comes around the head. So let's introduce a little bit of crosstalk into the simulation. When my virtual headphones come off, I'm going to add a little bit of the left side into the right and the right side into the left. And I'm going to filter it as well to simulate the acoustic shadowing of the head that's in between. Interaural time delays are usually said to be around 600 microseconds for the average head, but in this case we're not talking about the maximum possible interaural time delay, which happens when sound comes directly from the side and then takes 600 microseconds to get to the other side. We're talking about sound that's coming from in front of you a little bit, so the difference isn't going to be quite as much. I made a rough estimate of about 520 microseconds for the delay. Let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, I don't know about you, but I still don't hear a drop in pitch. By the way, if any of you do hear a drop in pitch for any of these demonstrations, please do comment about it below. The last idea I have is that as all of this change in the sound happens when the headphones come off, you also hear a little bit of noise from the ambient environment going on that you didn't hear before because you were wearing headphones. So let's introduce a little bit of white noise at the same time, just as a last ditch effort. Well, I'm kind of out of ideas. Please, if you can explain this in any way, let me know. And better yet, if there's any way we can reproduce it through a simulation like this to really prove the case, that would be great. It seems like a pretty strong effect, and it's not one I've heard talked about a lot. I'll keep thinking about it. If you have any ideas, comment below. I've got a new album coming out, mostly instrumental tunes, couple songs. I'm going to be posting those songs and tunes on my second channel, and then I'm going to post breakdowns and sort of music theory analyses of those tunes on this main channel. There's a Patreon link down in the description. Thanks.